an outbreak of non-fatal mushroom poisoning with Omphalo to Solarius among Syrian refugees in Izmir, Turkey. Yo, what's up? Is someone that's someone, and welcome back to today's report. Today's report was published by Alkin Ball, Murat Enel, Ismail Yomez, Ilge Zakata, and Azgi Duman Attila, where they report 19 patients, where they took Omphalo to Solarius. And here's the full report details. Alright, so here we are finally covering Omphalota solarius, aka the jack-o'-lantern mushroom, a very poisonous one. We're covering this because it came up in a report recently, a scout stream, where the users were tripping and found this mushroom in the woods, then ate it in an attempt to get higher. But you'll just see here, this mushroom will not provide a favorable experience. Often this mushroom will be confused for chanterelle mushrooms, due to the color, which chanterelles are considered a delicacy but there's some key differences between the two visually. For example, Omphalota solarius is called the jack o lantern mushroom because it will actually glow in the dark. And here this was most likely the case. These refugees thought they could eat them, but due to ignorance, it put them in the hospital. And we are covering a scientific article, because why would anyone want to actively consume a poisonous mushroom? So for a better reading experience, I did edit some things, namely I took out the references and redundant information. We'll break down this mushroom in a future video, so stay tuned. But I'm sure you'll enjoy this video, it's really unique considering it's about refugees and the results of war. So without further ado, let's dive right into this. Outbreak of mushroom poisoning is uncommon in Izmir, Turkey. We report an outbreak of mushroom poisoning with Omphalota solarius in Syrian refugees. 19 patients, median age 7.8 years, age range 2 to 52 years, 16 female, 3 male. 19 patients were admitted to the adult and pediatric emergency departments of Tepesik Training and Research Hospital, Izmir, due to vomiting and abdominal pain within 2 hours after eating mushrooms. Transaminase levels were moderately elevated only in one patient. The symptoms disappeared in 8 hours after admission. In our opinion, this outbreak was a good example that refugees can change the disease profile in emergency practice. Introduction Mushroom poisoning is still a health problem that affects the world. It is estimated that there are over 5,000 species of mushrooms worldwide. Only 20 to 25% of mushrooms have been named, and 3% of these are poisonous. Depending on the type of mushroom, the adverse effects range from mild gastrointestinal symptoms to major cytotoxic effects, resulting in organ failure and death. Omphalota solarius is a poisonous mushroom that is bright orange in color, found on decaying wood or tree, lacks the fruity taste, and can glow in the dirt. It's formally known as either Codicybilidens, Agaricisilidens, Codicybilaria, Pleurotus solarius, and jack o lantern mushroom. It appears similar to some edible mushroom, like chanterelles. A small number of Oolarius poisonings have been reported, especially more of them from North America and only one from Turkey. According to the official data, there were 1,645,000 Syrian refugees in Turkey as of November 2014. Unofficial numbers are estimated at around 2 million. Hospitals in border provinces offer approximately 30% to 40% of their services to Syrian refugees. We present 19 Syrian refugee poisonings with Oolaris mushroom because of its rarity. Additionally, we want to highlight the changing disease profile in emergency departments due to refugees who escaped from the Syrian civil war to Turkey. The adult and pediatric emergency departments at Tepesik Training and Research Hospital were very crowded, high-level emergency units in Izmir, Turkey. The departments are organized as two different units. Adult Emergency Department is an emergency residency training clinic, and the annual number of patients is about 200,000. The Pediatric Emergency Department is a fellowship training clinic, and 170,000 children, 518 years, apply annually. According to our hospital data, a total of only 5 patients diagnosed as mushroom poisoning were admitted to our departments between 2008 and 2015 in 5 different times. 19 Syrian refugees were admitted with complaints of nausea, 
vomiting, and abdominal cramping to the adult and pediatric emergency departments at Tepesic Training and Research Hospital Izmir, Turkey at the same time on July 30, 2014. According to their medical history, they ate the mushrooms collected from the roadside close to where they live. All of them resided at the same building. The poisoning symptoms occurred within two hours after eating. The demographic and clinical features of the patients collected from their emergency files retrospectively are summarized in Table 1. 10 and 19 patients had mild dehydration signs. There were no other abnormal physical findings. Laboratory tests revealed moderately elevated aspirate aminotransferase level only in one 26-year-old female patient. The control laboratory tests after 24 hours were normal. The patients received conservative treatment, including intravenous fluid infusions and activated charcoal. The clinical symptoms disappeared after 6 hours in all of the patients. All of them were hospitalized for 3 days, as the following up cannot be assured, and in that time period, the mushrooms were examined. In most mushroom poisoning cases, it is generally not possible to identify the species of mushrooms eaten, largely because of the insufficient knowledge of patients or their relatives regarding mushrooms, or insufficient or incorrect history given to the physician. Moreover, relatively few physicians are well acquainted with mushroom identification, especially for differentiating between poisonous and edible species. However, in our study, the samples of the mushroom that the patient brought were examined. Our hospital organized an investigation team to the area where the mushrooms were collected. These mushrooms were identified macroscopically as oolarius, and their identification was verified microscopically as well. The details of the mushroom are as follows. Family, Agaricaceae chaval, Species, Oolarius, Macroscopic and Microscopic Features, Pileus, 60 to 75 mm across, Depressed to funnel shaped, bright orange to yellowish orange, Stipe, 50 to 90, 10 to 20 mm, Paler than Pileus, usually tapering towards the base. Figure 1a. Flesh yellowish, taste and odor not distinctive, lamellae decurrent, golden yellow to orange, spore print creamy white, basidia 25 to 30, 7 to 8 millimeters, four spored and clavate, figure 1b, spores 5 to 6, 4.5 to 5.5 millimeters, slope gothic and smooth, figure 1c, cystidia not seen. Polypolis acutus. Polytrauma consists of parallel, non reactive hyphae with encrusting pigments. Ecology rare, autumn, gregorious, or grouped on the roots are at the base of trunks of some hardwood trees, such as chestnut, beech, oak, and olive. Specimen examined Turkey Izmir, Aditendeg, Camcool, Near Road, Under Pine, and Hardwood Trees on the root. Discussion all of the 19 patients were the members of two neighboring families, and they lived at the same building. The oldest of them collected and gave some of the mushrooms to the other family. They lived at a government camp for six months near the border of Syria before they came to Izmir. This was the biggest mushroom poisoning outbreak in the seven-year history of our hospital. Until the outbreak, the number of patients with mushroom poisoning was very limited. When we searched the literature for Oolarius, Jacqueline or mushroom toxicity, we have found a few publications. French and Gerritsen, 1988, reported 14 cases that the mushroom led to vomiting in 8, diarrhea in 5, weakness in 2. No laboratory abnormalities were observed, and recovery had completed within 18 hours for their case series. Van den Hoek, et al., 1991, presented the cases of 7 adults who ingested jack o' lantern mushrooms. All patients experienced nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramping. There were diarrhea in three, weakness and dizziness in four, sweaty in two cases. Three of the seven patients had mildly elevated liver function tests and hypokalemia in one patient that requires potassium supplementation. The first case here is from Turkey was reported by Bassa Menli and Isla Glu, 2014. According to their manuscript, Three adult patients were admitted with complaints of nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramping, and weakness at the mean of 1.5 hours after eating mushrooms. 
No laboratory abnormalities were detected, and the patients were discharged after 12 hours. Our case series consisted of 19 patients, and most of them were in the pediatric age group. The symptoms started within 2 hours after ingestion, and they disappeared in 8 hours after emission. But we preferred to observe the patients for 3 days until the mushroom examination was completed. Additionally, we anticipated that the refugees could not come back to our hospital or another medical center for follow-up. We know that due to the Syrian civil war, hospitals in border provinces offer approximately 30-40% to 40 of their services to Syrian refugees, and because of that, there are capacity issues in the hospitals. But not in the border cities. In the west part of Turkey, too many Syrian refugees were admitted to the emergency departments with unusual complaints and diseases. Changing social and economic status, poor living conditions of the refugees in the cities worsen their living habits. In conclusion, the refugees may change the profile of disease seen in emergency departments. If the people do not pay attention, they will confuse ovarius with edible mushrooms. To the best of our knowledge, there have been no reports of poisoning with ovarius mushroom in childhood. We present these cases due to its rarity and to draw attention to refugees who can be admitted to emergency departments with unusual clinical pathologies from residents.